You're watching Lead Student Television. I'm Siobhan Dale, and today I'm going to be talking to Callum Pinches, Rory Yates, Neve McCarthy, and Alex Gibbon, the candidates for the role of Leeds University Union's new Griffin editor. So to start, I'm just going to ask each of you to introduce yourself, what course you're doing, and why you're running. So to begin, I'm going to go with Yori, Yori, Rory Yates, too many whys. Uh, so hi, I'm Rory. Uh, I'm a third year student in the School of Philosophy doing philosophy, politics and economics. Um, and I want to be your Griffin editor. So I've written and sub-edited for the Griffin throughout my time at uni. Uh, and I believe the Griffin provides one of the loudest voices for students who want to be heard. I want that uh, belief to be extended to as many people as possible. Um, so I'm running because I think we can change three key areas. That's representation, expansion and enrichment. So firstly, I want all students to feel represented by the Griffin, no matter their background. But to do this, I want to improve communication between the Griffin and our many cultural societies to build strong relationships and encourage new writers to join. Uh, this will help promote voices such as those from BAME, LGBTQ+, and working class backgrounds. Um, and furthermore, uh, make sure that the Griffin stands up for students and represents them in that way when they think the university has made bad decisions. Uh, secondly, I want to look at expansion of the paper to make it a more professional looking outlet. Um, so I think to do this, we need to redesign uh, our webpage to give it a sharper, more professional look. Um, as well as have further outreach to industry professionals to come and give talks at the university um, just to make it a more rounded paper. And finally, I want enrichment for all of our writers so the Griffin can be a viable option uh, for people who want to go into the journalism industry. Um, so for this, I want increased writers workshops across our sections, um, as well as special workshops on things like graphic design, interviews and research, uh, and also building a better relationship between the current writers and the editors. Uh, vote for Rory to tell your story. Um, I'm going to go to Alex Gibbon next. Okay, hello. Um, I'm Alex Given, and I'm a final year Arabic and Spanish student. I'm currently the uh, editor of In the Middle magazine, which is a cultural supplement of the Griffin, and I'm going to be your Griffin editor. Um, but well, I have just had the best time um, working with the paper. I've been doing it since first year, where I was a writer in my first two years. Um, last year I became editor of the art section and now I head up the magazine so I believe I'm really experienced I really know the inner workings of the paper um, I know I know the day-to-day -day running I know all the boring things but I also know wh where we can improve and all things I want to change so um, my uh, manifesto is split into connectivity creativity and diversity as the three main points um, the connectivity I really want to up the social media game on the Griffin as we all know Print journalism is still there, but the future is online. Um, and I really, really think the website needs a complete overhaul. Um, we need to be more user friendly, we need to get more people engaging with um, us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, we need to get a bit of advertising on the website and get a bit of money in the, um, in the society because money speaks, we can get the equipment, we can get people in for the talks um, and we can get some good socials going on for our members. Um, also, it's important to hold the university to, to account via all these platforms, um, especially with the pandemic, how students have been treated in, regard, in regards to the quality of teaching, accommodation and mental health. Um, and also just really creating an open channel of communication between our readers and our writers. The creativity element, I want to actually team up with LSTV, which is why it's really fun, fantastic to speak with you today. I want to get some more short form video content, um, news based uh, um on our on all our social media that i'm going to overhaul um i'm going to have a get, hopefully get a joint membership with uh, re reduced joint membership between the two societies um another aspect of creativity you want to get an in-house um team of illustrators um on and get some more student artwork uh, in the pages because we've got a fabulous fantastic uh, really creative body of students i've worked with quite a lot um as my time as magazine editor um but probably one of the most important elements of my manifesto is the diversity um, obviously you hear all these buzzwords like diversity and inclusivity i want to include increased representation of the paper at the paper but sometimes that can be quite empty if it doesn't um, come with structural change so we have some uh, poc writers internships at the minute i want to take that further i want to expand those i want to include photography web design video production and illustration and um, internships um for, for poc members um I'm going to regularly hand over my editor's letter to people from marginalised communities throughout the year. Um, and I want to in invite speakers from um, marginalised communities to come and do, do workshops and talks um, as well for our members too. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully some of that maybe resonated with you. Um, and if it did, vote Gibbon for Griffin. Perfect. I'm going to go to Neve McCarthy next. 
Okay, hi, I'm Neve, and I'm running for Griffin Editor. I was music editor last year and I'm currently social media associate now and I'm running because the Griffin has literally defined my time at Leeds as much as my degree has and my friends are sick to death of me mentioning the Griffin so I thought I'd just compound it a little bit more by going for editor so I can like hopefully continue the amount of opportunities and experience it's given me for the next cohort of students. Um, my key manifesto points I want to increase representation and accessibility to the paper because I know not everybody has had access to a writing platform before but everyone should and as social media associate this year I've had I've often been the first part of call when people are coming and saying that they feel daunted because they've never written before and I want to remove that obstacle um, through workshops for every section so that everyone gets the basics of how to write for every section um, and I also want to push for more diversity across our editorial team so the work that's been done this year to progress doesn't fall off and everyone has their voice heard. Um, so I want to keep reaching out to different societies for that and collaborating to get writers from all different backgrounds. Um, another point I want to do is support and I want to make sure everyone is supported to get the most they possibly can out of the Griffin because we have a lot of opportunities and I don't think they're necessarily maximised. So I want to collaborate with LSTV and LSR more and get multimedia training. Um, for people interested in going to broadcast journalism because there's a joint membership for a reason and I think maybe we aren't using it enough and it'd be more incentive um, and I want a designated associate to give feedback and also be there for well-being so that people know they can go to them and have their voice heard but voice any concerns and know that our editorial team will listen and will take action and my final point is I want it to be as reflective of our experience of Leeds as possible and document what we love and hate about it because I'm from near Leeds, I love Leeds as a place um, and I think it should illuminate all the best bits of Leeds while still maintaining that current affairs and documenting what our issues are with Leeds and making sure everyone's voices are heard so I want to work with different societies and the activities officer to shine a light on some of the student-led events and hopefully collaborate with more societies on our events ourselves so if you believe in those policies and think they should be implemented then believe in me. Perfect. And um, I'll go with Callum Pinches next, please. Yeah. So my name's Callum. Um, I'm a second year student here at Leeds. I study politics, philosophy and economics. Um, and I'm running for Griffin Editor mainly because I've had such a brilliant time uh, being the online sports editor this year. And last year I was contributing as well. And I've just thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's been a great experience. Um, I want to expand that to as many students as possible. I think you can learn so much from the Griffin, whether that's, you know, writing or understanding more about journalism or just getting involved with a great uh, group of people. Um, for, for my manifesto, it's quite simple, really. I just want to have a student voice. I want, I want the student voice to be represented and I want students to feel like they, they have their voice heard. Um, under COVID, obviously, it's been quite difficult and student, my, students may feel marginalised, a bit confused as to what their situation is. Um, I want them to know that if elected editor, that my duty and my my uh, my role will revolve around giving you a voice and making sure that things such as rent issues and housing um, issues with the university are heard and put out there. I think that's a really important thing that um, that students feel like they know that their voice is being heard. I want to increase also student engagement, and how we can do that is by doing a student voice forum, so enabling students to come to the Griffin and say, these are the issues that I care about, this is something that I want you to write about, and so that we can promote that and make sure that the changes, change, change occurs, sorry. Um, I want to work more with society, so I've been privileged to be the online sports editor this year, and I know the, the sports societies do so much great activities, obviously under COVID that's been restricted a bit, but there's so many successes and so many stories to be told in Leeds, and I think it's so important that the Griffin does that. Um, as said before, increasing diversity is a, a major issue and it's really important, and the POC me uh, mentorship schemes that have occurred this year are great, but I think that work needs to go further in terms of outreach to local uh, minority media outlets, I think that's really important, um, to make sure that everyone, you know, regardless of, regardless of class or, or background feels that they can come to these and they can write for the Griffin and that's a really important thing. Um, I want to invite alumni, previous alumni to come back and give talks so that people are inspired and that they, they want to write for the paper and I want people to feel like they're politically engaged, you know, invite ex-politicians or people who are currently in the political system to come back to Leeds and, and give talks to the Griffin and make sure that make sure that you have a voice and it's heard and um, in general, yeah, it's, as I've just said, um, if you want a student voice, I think it's important to vote and I, I hope to be your editor, so vote pinches. Perfect. Now, I know that you've all briefly went over it, but if you were elected, what are your top three priorities as Griffin editor? And I'm going to start with Neve. 
Yeah, so um, my top three priorities are increasing the representation and accessibility to ensure that everyone has access to it and can like, have their voice heard in the Griffin through workshops and um, reaching out to different societies and joining with them because I understand not everyone does an essay based subject either so I want to reach out to more courses and make it a more representative um, paper and then my next um, policy is that I want to make sure every writer and every member is supported to get the most they can out of the Griffin through maximising the opportunities and equipment we have available to us and having a designated associate for feedback and support systems so that um, any feedback can be implemented easier because there's someone to deal with it and if you're struggling I know it's it's a student newspaper and the student part is important in that everyone has their own stuff and sometimes it can get a bit much with deadlines going on so I think it would be really useful to have someone there to check in with and finally I want it to reflect the experience of student life in Leeds as much as possible and illuminate the issues that matter to us and make sure everyone's voices are heard on this on these concerns and then work with societies and the activities officers to highlight the student-led events in Leeds and make sure that we're showcasing what's going on within our student community as well because there's always so much and I think that the Griffin should reflect that. Perfect, next I'm gonna to go to Rory. Uh, yeah, so similarly one of my most important points um, would definitely be our, our increased representation um, and, I, and I think the problem we've had this year is, although I think Safi's, uh, who was our current editor, um, has done a good job really trying to uh, push this forwards and, incre and increase inclusivity. Um, the feedback I've got from people is that this has been done possibly in a way that seems a little bit tokenistic. So we've had special editions such as um, BAME editions and LGBTQ plus editions, which I think is great. And, you know, it's encouraging these voices to be heard. But some people think that, um, that, that this might be saying these voices are only to be heard then. So I, th I think the issue we have is that we don't have the writer base right now to represent those voices. Um, so it is about that communication and collaboration uh, with our societies, as well as our execs. I think our execs also represent um, well-being. So to push for, for mental health, um, as well as to the postgraduate and international students, because I don't think their voices are really heard in the paper. And of course, as I mentioned with um, our different groups across our cultural societies, and that also includes our religious ones, and of course our sports ones and things. Um, so that's my main and first point on representation and then expansion, because I think um, we want the paper to really be taken seriously. Um, I, I, I love the paper and I think I speak for everyone here. We, we all love the Griffin. Um, it's a brilliant paper, but you know, I think especially in its online format, it doesn't come across in maybe um, the most modern and fresh way we want it to. And I think if we do improve that through increasing the web design, um, as well as increasing opportunities uh, for people to come in and give talks, um, for example, journalists in the industry or even alumni, as we have done in the past, and this will really increase the image of the paper and make it uh, a worthwhile time that people not only want to read but write for um, and that comes through to the final point of enrichment um, through which you know this is a paper that I believe having worked here I've really um, perfected or not perfected but um, worked for my writing style and really come into my own uh, that I wouldn't have done without the paper um, and, I, I, and I owe this to not only the editors um, but also the other writers because the community is great but I think um, it's about increasing those opportunities for everyone. Um, so writers workshops, which we've had in some of our uh, sections, but I think if we made sure they came into all the sections then everyone could really feel like they could develop their standard of journalism and make it feel like it's really worthwhile editing for. And on top of that, um, to increase the transparency between writers and editors, because some other feedback I've had is that um, a few writers feel like they're not always um, very clear on the editing process, for example, so we could have some more transparency on that. Um, and also say what's being posted and when it's being posted. So I think just in general, in that way, harboring a good community, that people feel comfortable and happy to write for and they can really harness their skills to uh, go into the industry of journalism. That's great. I'm gonna go to Callum next. Yeah, so as I said before, you know, the three main points to me is make sure student voice is heard. Um, you know, I think the students have, like quite a lot of the media had a bit of a, a bit of a, um, have been painted in a certain way and have, have not their, their concerns raised in, in the right way. So for instance, such as COVID, you know, rent strikes, um, issues with the university, um, getting back fees, these kind of things are important. They affect us like financially, they affect our social situation. So making sure that people know that that voice is being heard and that those stories are being told. If you have an issue regarding the university, regarding the union, you can come to the Griffin and you can talk to the editors and they'll tell you that they'll, they'll make sure that that's broadcasted and hopefully put that out there. 
Um, furthermore, with engagement, I think it's really important that people feel inspired to write, that they're inspired to write for the Griffin, because at the end of the day, if they're doing something they enjoy, they enjoy then it's going to be the best, that's going to be the best um, thing for them. So in terms of that, having loads of media events, making sure that ex-journalists and people who've written for the Griffin who, who have now done really well can come back and inspire people to, to continue writing. Um, working with societies, making sure that they know that um, their voices and that their, their issues are heard and, and we can deal with that. Um, as I said before, having a, a student forum so that people feel like their issues can be raised um, and write sessions as well, you know, making sure that people have the support network around them that they can deal with that. As Rory and Need both said before, you know, increasing diversity in the paper is a really important thing. Um, you know, it can sometimes feel like people are underrepresented. And as was said earlier, you know, it's great to have these issues. It's great to have LGBTQ plus issue or Black History Month. And that's really important. But at the same time, this needs to be a year long thing. It doesn't just need to be one month or one, one issue. So the POC mentorship schemes, I think, are really important in doing that. And the work that Safi's done this year is, is great. And I think extending that and pushing that further and making sure that, you know, anybody from any background feels that they can write for the Griffin is a really important thing. Um, so, yeah, those are the th three things that I'd say. Cheers. Perfect. And then I'll go to Alex. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, so my three um, primary points uh, for this campaign, um, I'll start with di like diversity. Obviously, it's fantastic that we have the issues that we have, like Black History Month, LGBT History Month issue. Um, I'm queer. I love reading that. I love having a gay old time flicking through those pages and seeing my community represented and seeing my voices, heard, my voices like mine amplified and heard. However, we do need to make an effort to uh, sustain that level of inclusivity um, and diversity. And I think that can only be achieved through structural change. So um, as has previously been stated, Safi's done a fantastic job with um, Nish and Ruby as well, the Equality and Diversity um, Officers at the Griffin this year in those uh, POC writers um, internships. But I think it's important to extend those um, and take that even further um, with illustration, video production, graphic design, um, as editor, I will hand over my editor's letter regularly to um, amplify uh, the voices of marginalised communities. It doesn't have to be um, it congruent with the issue, it doesn't have to be an issue theme. Um, I just don't see, as, as editor-in-chief, why I need an ex extra column inches and extra space and extra power when I can actually give that platform to someone else um, who might not have it. Um, and also something that has been really done well this year is um, speakers from marginalised communities that are big in the media industry coming and doing talks I think that's really important um, but I also think we can uh, extend that as well it doesn't have to be just the media industry it doesn't have just to just be journalists we can get graphic designers in we can get um, we can get politicians we've got a fantastic news section in the middle is all about the arts and, and, and culture why don't we get people in those industries in as well and um, really start a conversation going we've got the membership base and we've got we've got the funds as well so um, I, don't, I don't see why we need to sell ourselves short there. Um, and the second point I would say is increasing connectivity. Um, the social media presence needs to be stepped up, in my opinion. The website needs an overhaul. Um, and it's, it's still important to hold the university account through those platforms. And I, and I think um, that would like be a fantastic way of doing so, is making sure that we can engage as many students as possible on Twitter, on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, but also I'm interested in creating a forum so readers can tell um, the paper and tell writers of the paper what they want to read about and what issues they care about um, to, re to really just increase our readership and get more people interested in the paper because it's, it's a really fantastic space um, um, to report on what's going on on campus, what's going on in the city as well. Um, and then the third point I'll, uh, um, I'm going to summarise is going to be creativity. Um, and as I said before, I really want to uh, get involved with LSTV. If we're going to go online, we need to start making more content that's suitable to be online. If, if me, for me, it's videos, um, uh, you know, with the TikTok, with Instagram reels, with um, videos on Twitter. Uh, that's what catches my attention the most. Um, Vice are really, really good at, 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 at doing that. Um, and I don't see why we can't be as good as them because we've got the fantastic writers and we've got the fantastic talent. Um, we just need the direction. Um, so, I, and, I, and as I said as well, getting more art in the paper, as editor of um, In The Middle magazine this year, I've worked uh, a lot with local artists, with student artists, designing some absolutely amazing front covers and some back covers and um, working a lot with photographers as well. I want to get more of that in the paper. We've got such a talented body of students. We've got a, a pool of talent that's absolutely incredible. We need to be utilising it and we need to get more people on board. 
the Griffin is not just for writers, it's for any kind of creative, it's for artists, illustrators, photographers, graphic designers. And I really want to uh, broaden um, the, the view of the society. So more people want to get involved and the more people get involved, ultimately, the better the paper will be. So um, yeah, they're my, they're my three main manifesto points. Perfect. Um, so your next question is, with events such as media on your own terms being a great success, how will you collaborate effectively with other media societies on projects that benefit towards a more diverse student community? So I'm going to start with Rory. Um, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, I think a good place to start, as has been touched on, um, would be to look at creating a sort of lead student media hub to really show that uh, the Griffin, LST, LSTV and LSR are very integrated because I think we have a lot of crossover. Um, but also within that, there's diversity of of the kind of media people like to consume and use. For example, some people may prefer rather listening to a podcast um, than reading uh, an article or likewise watching a piece of news. Um, so I think that's a really good way to, to really branch out across um, the diverse body of the students. Um, first, yeah, by, by integrating, as I mentioned, a, a sort of website hub um, that we can then access all three of the different areas from to really um, push for that integration this year. Um, to not have the Griffin be a separate entity, so to work well with those committees. And I think then in that way, um, it, it would work on my other policies I'm, I'm thinking about in terms of representation and communication, um, which is most important because, you know, as much as any of us want to really increase our diversity and inclusion across the board, there's only so much you can do working within the body of your own paper. So I think to branch out um, through those other means, through LSTV, through LSR, um, you can really then um, branch out throughout the student body and reach far more people. And then we can really magnify the voices of those who want to be heard, whether that be through writing their own articles, starting their own podcast, um, yeah, or, or making films and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think it's really just about uh, creating a more integrated idea between the three groups um, and then using that to then branch down um, and reach those different branches of our great community and the university. Great, thank you. I'm gonna go to Callum next. Um, yeah, just as has been said, it's, it's um, you know, getting that cohesion between LSTV, LSR um, and the Griffin is really important. Um, I, th I think that by creating that multimedia platform where there's cohesion between the three they, they, and they're kind of interlinked um, is it, really important because it's, as has been said, you know, you get more, you get more views, you get more readers um, and more voices can be heard that way. So that's, I think, really important. I think making sure that, as I previously said about student uh, voice forums, is that when people come with with the editor or to, to some editors with an issue and they say this is something I feel really strongly about uh, this is an issue I want to be broadcasted and I want it to 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 gain some traction is that if they come to that student voice forum that can then be passed on to LSTV or LSR and then we have kind of like a three-way three-way system where we have on the radio on the tv and with the griffin as well um and it's just about maximizing that voice it's just about making sure that any story or any any information that, that the students want to put out there is put out there on as many platforms as possible so i think that's really important and also as regarding to sports um sporting success in Leeds, we've got great loads of great sports teams here and um, LSTV, I know, not this year, but in previous years because of COVID, obviously, they've worked really closely with the sports teams, interviewing them, getting, getting their stories told, sharing their successes and showing, you know, leads for what it truly is, the university, which is a great sporting university. Um, so I think definitely with that, working with sports societies, um, making sure that their successes and their stories are told is really important. Um, and, and working with all societies, really, making sure that they have their, their voices put out there on a three-way platform with the student with the student voice forum. So, yeah, that's what I'd say. Perfect. And I'm going to go to Alex next. So I think, for me, this question is all about making the connections early on. Uh, I think, so far, um, LSR and the Griffin do actually have quite a good um, link going on. I think um, LSTV and the Griff and the, well, I think LSR and, and, and LSTV are good as well. But I think our two societies uh, need to work on our connection. And I think when that happens, um, the possibilities will just open up. Um, but in terms of like diversity, and you, and you want to talk about increasing representation, and making feel making people feel like they're being seen and heard. Um, we, it's about making connections early on and sustaining that connections as well. Don't wait till February to contact the LGBT society about what they, they can what they can do for your paper because it seems tokenistic and it seems a bit um, opportunist. Don't do the same with Black Femsoc, um, Afro-Caribbean Society, etc. You know, I, 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 I could go on. Um, it's, it, it, we, you need to make a sustained effort throughout the year 
Um, and it's not and it's not just what you put in the paper. It's also what you put on for the members of the paper. You know, what workshops are you getting in? Like, who who, who are you getting in and what are they speaking about when they're here? Um, what are you making an extra effort to reach out to people? Don't just say, oh, we ha we've um, we just don't really have any black writers. And we've put we've put all the content up and, you know, not, uh, we haven't been able to do anything. No, you have to actually go out your way and figure out why people aren't coming forward and then fix that issue. And I think that's that the process of that has started this year, which I think is really fantastic. Um, and, I, and I think part of that process is things like you said, collaborating with other societies, putting events on, um, getting a general buzz interested in, in people. Because um, if, you, if you book someone from Galdem, you know, people are going to be really interested in seeing what they have to say. Um, and then they'll see, oh, it's the, the Griffins kind of put this, put this on. I submit so Griffin Cup really is interested in maybe what I have to say about my experience as a as like a woman of colour or a non-binary person of colour. Um you, and there's and there's ways you can um kind of do that across like obviously different groups and people of different backgrounds. Um I think like working class students is an area that isn't really tapped into in terms of asking, you know, where like are they writing for our paper? Are we getting those issues heard in our paper? Because I think often, you know, students are just quite left wing. Everyone kind of has like sort of similar ish politics, but you forget that like actually people's backgrounds and, and socioeconomic, socioeconomic upbringings are very different. Um, and uh, that can be really intimidating when you come to uni. So it's important that we create a space where people can um, speak out about uh, their experiences and, you know, what it's like for them. Um, so yeah, there's, there are, there are lo lots of ways you can do that. Um, uh, but I, I, yeah, I just think it's the main thing is just in getting reaching out early on and proving to the people that you want to work with that you're not just doing this to tick a box and you're not just doing it because you put it on your manifesto last year and and oh and oh and it makes me look really great and everyone votes for me because I put diversity and it's and we're all left wing we're all students. No, you actually have to you know you know the proof will be in the pudding. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, that's what I, that's what that's what I would say. That's my answer to that. That's great, and I'll go to Neve. Yeah, I think it's a really important issue. And I think I've realised myself over the last year that the media industry in general, there's so much nepotism to it. And so much about it is like having connections with people and the people that have connections are the people that already have like the privilege and stuff. So maybe their school was really good and pushed them to do it. Like they're generally the sort of people that you would expect to get those positions and we need to change that. And I think part of that is definitely collaborating because there's obviously a shared experience and a shared interest in the media so we need to work together and reach a wider range of people and I think for example this year we've done a lot of talks like Alex was saying with Garden but why would the talks not then be put on LSTV or like recorded as a podcast to go on LSR like I think um, having them on those platforms makes them more accessible makes people take more interest and then gets more people listening and hearing the tips which could then encourage someone to go into journalism in whatever form that is whether it's like broadcast or through the paper um and also we have we all have pretty big audiences so it would really benefit us to work together and expand that audience and Leeds is a really diverse city so by expanding that audience there's more diversity in there already um I think it's I've already said I want to do some more workshops and events with other societies and there are so many societies for every different like thing you can think of in Leeds like there's a society for everything um so I think we do need to collaborate more and on the workshops especially so like there's LSR and LSTV but then there's like Lippy and the scribe and stuff and it'd be good to work together and sort of share the tips that we have to pass on to more people so that they're not feeling as intimidated um yeah, I think feedback would be really important as well so that people know that the change they want to see and their concerns are being addressed and heard. Um, I think it's important to keep asking ourselves if we're pushing ourselves enough and how we could be more representative. And I think by working together with LSR and LSTV, we can hold each other accountable more and share feedback we get so we can improve it and translate it from maybe radio to the paper or to TV then. And like really focusing on what student wants students want and want to see in the different media societies would be really helpful I think. Okay effect. Um, so your next question is the Griffin has had to adapt to make its content available digitally especially this year so will you continue to utilize this and continue to further online engagement? I'm going to start with Callum first. 
Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's that's such an important thing, as I said, especially during COVID. And and the, you know, print media is important and it does have a place. But where society is now, we're kind of changing into this you know, digital world, and it's important that we have a, a great online presence. Um, whether that be the website, and I think the website is good, but as has been said, there can be changes there. I think as well, um, social media engagement is is a must. I think, um, and I think that comes under as well. You know, that cohesion between LSTV and LSR and the Griffin and, and to make sure that the, the the different social media accounts are linked so that if you put one story out on the Griffin social media that can also go out on LSTV and link to a podcast and then you have as I said kind of like a three three-way three-way attack on that front um, you know it, engaging with Instagram um, and engaging with Twitter um, putting on like Q&A sessions I think is important with students uh, making sure that the writers and the people, of the students of the university feel like their voices are being heard. Um, and, that, and social media is a great way to, to get that across, I think. Um, and as I said before, like the, a student uh, voice forum, would, which could be that, I mean, that's kind of like a, a multi-entity thing that could be via social media as well. Um, so as I said before, like Instagram, on Facebook, having Q&A sessions, making sure that students have their voices heard. Um, yeah, and ultimately making sure that the Griffin has like a brilliant online digital presence um, has never been more important. I think, I think that's, such, such, that's something that I would strive to continue with. Perfect. And I'm going to go to Alex next. I love this question. I absolutely love this question because I think this year, so obviously there's been the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, so we haven't been able to have many, as many print editions. So that means we've had to put the print edition online. And I think that's not something that would have happened without the pandemic, but I think it's actually worked really, really well. Um, we're getting the same kind of levels of engagement on the print issue it, with it being online uh, as we do, as kind of the many copies that we hand out that we can track um, during a normal year. Um, and I think it's incredibly important to keep that going. So I would definitely sustain that. Um, also, we don't know uh, to what extent we are not going to be in the same situation in September. I kind of muddled that sentence a little bit. Um, but uh, so there might be, you know, immunocompromised students who can't get onto campus and can't, and it's not really safe for them to go to the union and access um, a copy of the of the paper. So it's important to keep it online for them as well. Um, and yes, yeah, so I would 100% keep, keep that going. But uh, yeah, the, focusing on digitising the Griffin and, inc and increasing the and improving the online presence of the Griffin is something I really, really want to do as editor. That's kind of one of my main focuses, actually, because we're, we're very much, I mean, it pains me to say it really does, but we're kind of hit to the post by the tab on this one because they have a very, very good online social media game. They know, um, I mean, because they actually do pay people to do it is the main reason, um, but their Twitter game is really strong. They're always having, they're always, they know how to um, uh, phrase a tweet and, Get, get, the, get the image and get the title um, correct. So you kind of want to click on it. You're really compelled to understand, like to want to know what the piece is about. Um, they're really good at um, timing their posts. They're really good at the design of all their online, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. And I think we need to reach that level. Um, we need to reach that level by getting people in who, who have the, you know, there's graphic design courses at Leeds. There's people who are, who are fan, you know, are, are whizzes at Photoshop, they're whizzes at InDesign. Get, let's get them involved. Let's get them in. Let's let's get um let's get let's beat the tab basically is what I want to do, um, but yeah no I, I think it is really important and I think the future of journalism is on is going to be online like the people our age I'm the only person I know that buys a uh, um a copy of the paper I get the Guardian every Saturday because you know metropolitan liberal elite you know but um and I love Otto Lang's recipes but anyway uh. Everyone gets their news on Twitter and on Facebook and on on, on websites, and we why we need to reflect that because our readership is so is young people. It's mainly kind of like eighteen, what eighteen to twenty one. Um, so yeah, I think it's like a really important change that needs to be made. I would overhaul the website. I would put a lot more focus into the Twitter, especially, but just generally what's what's going on on our social media um, and. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just really incredibly important. I'm, I'm, I will. I promise. I will. If I'm elected, I will really, really focus on that because I think it's just um, something that would. If it changed, we will just take the paper to the next level. That's great. I'm loving the enthusiasm for that <laughs> question because everybody, as soon as I said it, eyes lit up. Um, I'm going to go to Rory next. Uh, yeah. So, 
obviously, I think I speak for everyone to say that this past year has been you know, one of the hardest any of us have ever faced. Um, and more than anything, I've found personally, I think most people that turning to online connection has been, you know, a, a go to way to, to, to comfort and to deal with um, kind of issues when you're feeling low and stuff. And I think that in terms of the university, um, for many people, the, the Griffin uh, is sort of like um, a, a hub that people go to to find out what's going on at the university and to engage with people and communicate. Um, so I think, yeah, this is why it really matters that we start from the center and going out. So of course that means working on our social media engagement and stuff. But if people want to engage in the social media post, then we've got to make sure that the website looks great and that it's representing what we want to hear. So that goes back to the other things we've been talking about. Um, but in terms of also with a website, maybe uh, introducing profiles for people. So at the moment, it's quite awkward if you want to go and find um, if, if there's someone you think is a really great writer and you want to go and find their stuff, the search bar, it's quite awkward. You have to kind of find one of their articles, then click on their name within the article to find it. But I think we could kind of make a page where we have a list of all of our writers uh, to represent and, you know, again, make people feel, feel like it's worthwhile they're writing for it on that online presence. Um, and as well as that, possibly introducing some sort of moderated, of course, but comment section, again, to increase that engagement. So, you know, if we have a, a great post someone's done about kind of, um, ways to uplift yourself during the pandemic or going forward just generally things um, that we want to see people doing you know if we had a nice comment section people could really another way for people to engage with it like that or sort of to say oh, i read this and it yeah, made my day it really helped and again that'll make it worthwhile for the writers and the readers alike so yeah building on what everyone else has said i just think definitely the, the, the way forward is online and and the print is amazing this looks great this whole year and obviously to keep working on that um but definitely to focus at the same time on building our online presence. Perfect. Um, and I'm going to go to Neve next. Yeah, so I think like everyone else has said, this year has been really isolating and people have been turning to online. And I know myself, I've spent far too much time on social media, but I think we can maximise that. And it's like people are going to be on their phones all the time because we're in a pandemic. So we should have some sort of interactivity and some sort of fun. And I think as social media associate this year I've really tried to push the like putting the polls on the Instagram story and doing like getting feedback in that way and doing like Q&As and stuff and it's been really fun and it's had some good engagement and I think we could push that a lot more and possibly like expand the people involved in social media because I know quite a few not everyone's interested in just writing like it's a good platform and it's a good experience to have like on your CV in the future so I think it'd be really good to sort of push for that more and get more people involved with that and it could really like expand the presence a lot more because more like we're all students and then we'd have more time to put into it if it's split a little bit um and I think it's good to make the most of this time because it's important to remember not everyone's a big reader so some people pro probably would like walk past the paper because they're like not really bothered but if we really push for more illustration and more photography it might like generate a different group of people like reading it without having to physically pick up a copy so I think definitely having that more interactive feature and the more visual feature would help as well because like realistically we've all got quite a lot of media fatigue this year and we're sick of reading like the same news and it being a bit depressing at times but so having that kind of like more optimistic element and sharing people's like designs and photography would be really nice because I think it's like stuff that people want to see like I know last issue we had um an illustration of like people graduating and it was quite nice because it's like it, it's like a little bit of hope in times like this I think so I think we really need to push for that and remember that it's the main form of like it's the front of the paper really the social media it's the people people are it's the platform people are going to <laughs> um and coming to when they first meet it so I think making sure it's like as open and welcoming as possible it would be really great I also think we can like because everything's online we can work with other societies more and maybe host events like I know Ingsoc collaborated um, with Femsoc maybe to do a book club and it would be nice to get some across different platforms and especially going back to the LSTV and LSR we could do a lot more to combine that and I think we might as well make the most of it and make it as fun as possible so that everyone gets a bit of reprieve I think. Great. So the next question I've got for you is, um, how will the Griffin represent what students of Leeds want to see? Uh, I'll give you a little minute, but I'm going to go to Alex first. So if I was editor, the way um, I would um, get students really, really engaged in the paper and um, 
put things in that people actually want to read is well firstly i'm planning on uh, starting like an open channel of communication we're going to have a bit of a forum going on where readers can actually tell us what they want to see which i think is probably going to be one of the most useful and direct ways to find that out um, um so that's that's one thing but also just generally um you know making sure we keep our content as you know not as what stale mail and pale is up the phrase um you know which i think we do actually do quite well to be honest with you um but really trying to sustain that because that's something you could easily let slip and then that and if that happens people will just you know they won't feel engaged they won't feel like we're speaking to them they don't won't want to be a part of our readership and that's not what we want um but also we need to remember who our readership is so it's, stu it's like students primarily young people but stu like students that live in Leeds so we need to cover what's going on on campus we need to cover what the university is doing we need to make sure we're holding them to account um in terms of you know this year what I would have done is really made um, sure I was following what they were doing in terms of accommodation and rent strikes what they were doing to ensure quality of teaching, ensuring that students of all sorts economic backgrounds have access to technology properly and stuff like that. There are things that I think have fallen through the net. Um, mental health as well. What, what is the university doing about that? These questions you have to keep asking because it is a big institution um, and institutions need keeping in check. And I think uh, newspapers are a very good way to do that. Um, but also, uh, it's as well as being a student, it's the lead aspect you need to remember as well. So I think um, engagement with the community, engagement with who's in Leeds and what they're doing, what, who's in Hyde Park, what they've got. As I you know, said before, we've got amazing artists, musicians, um, you know, all sorts of creatives in the student community. To get let's spotlight what they're doing and support them. Um, but also outside the student bubble as well, um, there are some amazing. And I, I know person just personally like the um diy dance music scene in leeds is incredible um the the kind of grassroots uh, you know nightlife is really fantastic let's keep covering that um you know what's going on even just like things like what's going on in the council because whether you like it or not you know what they decide does actually affect us all um you know we live here our bins get collected uh we you know we, we want we, we want to live in a nice area we want to be able to go to the park and all the and it not you know not look like an absolute tip there's so just things like that um as well but I think the the content really comes from good content comes from really fostering a good community of writers. Um, so as an editor, uh, it's all just about nurturing your team, and that's what I found when I've been a section editor. That's what I found when I've headed up the magazine, and I feel like I've really got the skills to um, to carry on as ed if I was to be editor in chief as well. You know, make sure that you're spe you're spending you know you're spending time um on having one to ones with people i've done that through like uh, writer surgeries and workshop um for the past like couple of years uh making sure you're encouraging people who are maybe haven't done it before either they may be a bit nervous um you know just keep communicating with them just keep encouraging them and i think that's that is another and probably one of the most crucial ways you'll get really really great content that people want to read perfect i'm going to go to neve next yeah, I agree. I think communication is the key to um, making sure that we reflect what students want. And I think it just so much of it comes from what we love about Leeds. Like I've said, there's like I'm from near Leeds and there's so much that I appreciate about it that maybe doesn't make it into the paper. I think it should. And I think we should be as transparent as possible that you can write about whatever you want to write about and that your voice will still be heard. Um, so I really want to work more with societies and like reach out a bit more to them to find out like what they're doing and represent that. I know we have a society section, but maybe it could be expanded a bit to really like pay attention to what students are doing and so they can see themselves reflected in the paper more. Um, and I want to work with the activities officer to do that as well, to increase that coverage and like maybe collaborate to host our own events with them so that they can sort of get involved and meet like-minded people that they necess wouldn't necessarily have. Um, and I also think it would be really good to work with local businesses more on events and for ads in our paper because I know as much as we love the Domino's two for one pizza like it would be really good to prioritise local businesses and get them especially because of Covid and I know a lot of people are big fans of local businesses and stuff so it would be nice to see them represented and even if students have their own. Um, I think as well it's so important to keep voicing the concerns of the students and knowing that they can have their opinions heard, uh, continuing to hold like the union union to account and document what specifically is impacting student life and making sure that 
we as a platform are representing the concerns of our students because it is student led and like we should be prioritizing that. Um, I think, yeah, our paper should just reflect how diverse Leeds is as a city and how much is going on because it is really exciting and there's so much to do and so much to talk about. Like it's not a quiet city at all. There's so much going on all the time. So we're never going to run out of inspiration. So I think um, knowing what the writers want is really important and getting them to communicate with us, which I think we could do through the feedback that I've mentioned earlier and getting that and responding to that. Um, I just think it's important that whether you want your opinion on the rent strikes or whether Femme Soccer holding an event you want documenting or you just want to talk about how much you love Belgrave pizza and write about that, then there will be space to do that. So whatever you want to say, it's a very like free platform. Um, so yeah. That's great. I'm gonna go to Rory next. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think in terms of Think really what the students want to see again having written um uh, and being an editor for the arts and culture section which i think is one of the biggest sections uh in in the middle magazine um what, what i've really seen that people are interested in is not only um lo local stories or student stories about the students which represent them that's what usually get the most attention but also um the the level of standing up and scrutinizing standing up for students in scrutinizing university so first on, on the topic of um the, the, the content they want to see it's things like um big name interviews and things like that, whether that be at a local level. And, and, and obviously like as an institution, as the university, we make up such a large part of the community. So we do have a lot of power to, you know, reach out. People do want um, uh, to be interviewed or to have their story talked about under us. Um, so that works on, on a local level, yeah, with local creatives or whether it be small business initiatives, things like that. I, I think that, you know, people really do are engaged with stuff that's going on in their community. And furthermore, um, that just makes you more aware of, of what's going on um, and as well as that I think it's uh, yeah hearing student voice themselves and not only um, the, the great content they're already writing but also in student-led initiatives such as like I know there's during the pandemic there's been great charity work that students have been doing fundraising and things like that um, yeah and I just think it's, it's making sure that the whole community is heard uh, and and it, it all comes back to that, that increased communication between our societies to make sure that people feel comfortable and are happy um, to bring their stories to us um, not just for us to have to try and reach out and find people, but to create and harbour an environment. And I think that goes on again on, on feedback, as people have been saying, um, which I've been trying to do, talking to, to readers and writers at the moment and seeing what they're interested in. And I think we could create some kind of online forum, um, which would help people send in queries if they have issues, or even, as we said, it, having an integrated media hub with LSTV and LSR um, that could bring all those voices together and it could work as a kind of system to make sure it reaches us so we know what people want to hear. And if their voices aren't we heard and of course secondly it's coming on to that that scrutinizing of the university you know i think students this year have felt angry of course they have um based on a lack of clarity things such as safety nets um reparations on rent um things like that it, it, you know there's a lot for students to be angry about and i don't think that they necessarily feel like the griffin which is almost the spokesperson in a way for for, for the student body is always doing that um, I think that's not only communication between the Griffin and the university, because, for example, there might be things going on behind the scenes, um, such as the exec team, you know, over the Christmas holidays, we're negotiating to try and um, get great psychiatry and get us some proper policies based on the COVID things. But that wasn't reaching the student body, I think, from talking to people, we all felt very in the dark. And I think that, you know, if, if there's a good relationship of communication between the Griffin and the university, then those voices will be heard. And then, you know, we can then flip that on them and say, no, that's not right. You're not doing enough and stand up for the voices. Uh, so everyone feels like we're doing the right thing uh, as a newspaper uh, of the free press, I suppose. That's great. And finally, Callum. Yeah, I think so much of what has just been said is, is very true. Um, I think, you know, me personally, having talked to students about what do they want from a, from a student newspaper? What do they actually want from the Griffin? And I think, the resounding answer is they want their voice to be heard and they want they want the paper to show that their views are represented so as been said regarding covid you know rent strikes um, making sure that people feel that the, the paper is putting pressure on the university to do the right thing to act in their interest because at the end of the day it's a student paper and it should speak for the voices of the students i mean that's that's pretty fundamental i think there's so many good things that are going right in leads and i think 
obviously COVID has has had some slight hits to that, where whether that be you know going out to pubs or nightclubs. But I think there are so many so many brilliant venues and experiences to be had in Leeds, and that hopefully when they return, we can have something like a Leeds Stories, where 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 writers or, or whoever wants to be involved can go to these places, can go to restaurants, can go to pubs, um, and see live gigs, see live sporting events, and talk about them, and have have a, have a forum so that we can expand these issues and talk about the great city that Leeds is. Um, you can review, as I said before, there's brilliant nightclubs. I mean, I love Beaverworks. It's a brilliant nightclub. It's a shame that, it's, that we haven't been able to go there for quite a while. But when it's back open and when all the when all the good nightclubs are back open again, you know, students can go on, on a night out and review it and write about the Griffin for why why they've had such a good time. And I think that's that encapsulates Leeds as a city. I think that's really important that students feel like not only are they writing for a paper, but they're writing for a paper that is based in Leeds and tells a story about Leeds. Um, as I said, it's a brilliant city and it's got a lot of brilliant students and and I think fundamentally that should that should be voiced and, and those stories should be told. That's great. So your last question is, what can you bring to the Griffin that hasn't been seen before? I'm going to start with Neve. Um, I think first and foremost, I am. I know everyone is passionate about the Griffin, but I literally love it like I don't know what I'd have done with my time at uni without it. I think it's been so fundamental in me getting like places elsewhere and I want to keep ensuring that people are pushed in that and I think I can really be the person to provide that support because I've interacted with a lot of people this year um, through the social media and I know what the people that want to start writing are concerned about and I think providing that support is so important to getting more people into it and I think that combined with the passion I think um, would be really helpful and I think it like I just want it to be as enjoyable and as creative a space as it has been for me and as beneficial for everyone and I think that would really help and also I think coming from like near Leeds myself I think that's really helpful as well because I love Leeds to death I know it like the back of my hand like I could talk about it all day and I think that translates a lot and um, I'm so interested in what's going on and I really want to push that in the paper and make it as re representative and reflective of what students are experiencing in Leeds as possible. That's great. I'm going to go to Callum next. Yeah, I'd say I'm a second year student. So last year I lived in Halls. I lived at James Bailey. And um, what I think, you know, COVID, COVID really impacted my, my situation with, with Leeds and I was, I was loving uni and I had to go home halfway through. And I, I know what that, what that struggle is like to try and get your rent back and try and try and ask, you know, different accommodation. No, can I, can I have some money back here? Because I'm owed it basically. So I think understanding that situation and understanding how hard it can be for students. I think I have first hand experience of that. Um, as I said before, I'm a, a PP student. I'm really engaged with politics. I love it. And I think it's really important that, you know, whatever side you're on, that me make sure that people have pe uh, people coming to the university who are speaking that they they're interested in, they can engage with um and and really just inspire politically the students of, of the university um i have i have a passion for journalism it's what i want to do with my life and i think you know being a griffin editor would be a, would be a brilliant opportunity that i cherish and enjoy thoroughly and i think you know at the end of the day you should have someone who's going to work really hard for you as i know all of these candidates will but i know that i, I would try my utmost best to make sure that it's a brilliant paper and i think you know if you believe in a student voice then then you'll vote for me perfect i'm going to go to rory next Thank you. Um, yeah, so of course, first and foremost, um, I think my passion for journalism and writing drives me um, in all sections. Um, and I think that's, that's, of course, important. But it's um, also, of course, it's managing a team, you know, as the editor, you are the face of the paper, you're what people look to, um, to, to, have, to, to see what they're going to, how they're going to have the voices heard. Um, and I think I'd be very good at leading a team. Um, I've had some experience in the past. I, I had an online internship last year with a newspaper in London and also last semester I uh, wrote and directed a play for Open Theatre. So I, I, I've got experience working with the team and making sure that's a comfortable environment. And I think that's, again, what's the most important is do people feel comfortable writing for us? Do they feel like they can approach us? And I think fostering that I, I can really do. Um, I think I have the skills uh, for, for, for the communication, I've built up a strong network, uh, both socially and professionally, whilst whilst working at Leeds across a lot of different societies um, and within my course, which uh, the same as Callum is multidisciplinary. So I'm coming across a lot of different students, hearing what they've got to say. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think I understand the student struggle 
uh, again, we've all had to live through these very hard times and, and we, we've got anger, but you know, we don't want to be angry. We, we Let's turn that energy into something positive because no one wants to be reading all the time. Of course, we want to scrutinize the universe. We don't want to be reading all the time just about all the horrible stuff that's happened. We want to turn that into positive energy and create great content that represents everyone. And yeah, use the communication um, uh, between the societies and the exec committee uh, to really foster that. So I think, yeah, my, my combination of passion experience and I think just drive to make this paper better because you know this paper is, has helped me decide what I want to do with my life really there's nothing else I want to do but journalism uh, and I think yeah I just want to spread on that desire to anyone else who wants uh, to be a journalist as well. That's great and Alex finally. So what I think is really fantastic about this uh, cast of characters that we've got here that you can vote for is that we it's clear it's evident that we all just love the paper and we've, it's a really big part of our university experience um, However, what I think I can really, really bring to the world is like knowledge and experience. Like I've been, I'm in fourth year now. I've been doing this since first year. Um, I've worked my way up. I was, you know, sec, um, writer, section editor, and now I head up the magazine. For me, obviously, the, ne the next step is becoming the editor in chief. I, I really do feel like I've got such a good knowledge of not just the, you know, the big kind of campaign points, you know, the what goes in the paper and the, and the online and all that kind of thing. But, you know, even just things like finances um, and, and kind of the inner workings, the behind the scenes, the the, uh, the things you don't see if, if you're, you know, maybe if you're not part of the team. And I think from time to time again, I think I have proved myself um, throughout my time at the paper as someone who can, um, you know, go out, go above and beyond like just my role. You know, I in my in last year I created um, these things called writer surgeries. Um, where I could uh, spend like one-on-one -on -one time with individual writers, um, they'd bring a piece in and I'd go through it with them and I'd, I'd you know, offer, offer encouragement and, and how to improve. They were really successful. Um, and I see, I've seen people who came to that workshop improve their writing and are now as uh, section editors. And that's just really fantastic. And I, I want to keep bringing that energy and that encouragement and that um, community spirit to the Griffin because I think obviously it's been really, really difficult this year with the pandemic to foster that kind of... Um, feeling and sentiment but um as i did to next year I, I really really want to bring that back again um because i think it's actually been a long time since we've really had uh I, oh i don't want to sound like a family but you know what i mean and it's it, and people need that at union especially if they need it at the minute um so that's what i, I that's what i bring to the role and i think I'm, I'm i'm definitely qualified and i definitely know what i'm doing all i need all i need is your vote i need everyone just to vote for me um so yeah if that resonates with anyone given for griffin that's great. So I just really quickly wanted to ask, because I know that you all probably work a little bit hard on your slogans and your taglines. So I just wanted to hear everybody's again, if that's OK. Um, so Rory, could you just say yours first? Uh, vote for Rory to tell your story. Great. And Alex? Vote Gibbon for Griffin. Neve. Um, believe in Neve for Griffin Editor. And Callum. Vote for a student voice, vote pinches. So thank you all so much uh, for joining me. It's been really insightful, really interesting. I wish you all the best of luck in your campaigns. Voting opens the 1st to the 4th of March. So everybody, please vote. And we'll be live streaming the results on the 5th. So good luck, everyone.